Okay, part two here, we're going to go over compound angle practice. Good for us, we already did the derivation, that's the hard part. Now we get to apply it. Yay! Helpful. So we're going to look at the following statement. Cosine of 2 theta plus cosine of theta equals 0. Now you might be tempted to say, hey, it's a quadratic, but this isn't a square, right? This is like um, some decimal, right? This represents some decimal. Let's say it's 0. 0.56, blah, 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 okay? This right here is not two times this, okay? It could be any value at all. Think about the unit circle or going along the wavelength. This and this are not double. In fact, it's something entirely different because we have to use our cosine and sine uh, doubling formulas. So this right here does not equal 0.56 times 2. Nope, not true. All right, in order for us to solve these, it has to be in the same type of variable. So let's go ahead and go over here to our formula, the cosine of 2 theta. Well, I've got one that's squared. Okay, there's one that's squared that has a sine, and here's one that only has a sine. Well, in this instance right here, I'm probably interested in the one that only has a cosine in it because this only has a cosine in it. So I'm going to use my identity, and I'm going to replace this with 2 cosine squared of theta plus negative 1. That's from that right there. Okay. Plus cosine of theta equals zero. Now I have a quadratic, right? Now I have one value that's been squared, the same value that's in a linear sequence, and then I have some kind of constant term. So I can say let's let two, I'm sorry, not two. We're going to let cosine of theta equal x. And so I would have 2x squared plus cosine of x is just our x plus negative 1 equals 0. And then I'm going to go ahead and solve this the rest of the way out for x. I'm going to factor it. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Two numbers that multiply together to make negative 2, but add to make positive x would have to be 2 and negative 1. So 2x squared plus 2x minus 1x minus 1 equals 0. And because we need practice factoring by grouping, I'm going to show you what that looks like one more time. Pull my 2x out of my first two terms here. Leaves me with x plus 1. My common term back here is negative 1, which leaves me with x plus 1. Now I should be getting the same quantity, and I did. So 2x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 1 equals 0. Now I'm going to go back in because this is where I like to substitute my cosine of theta back in. So 2 cosines of theta minus 1 equals 0 and cosine of theta plus 1 equals 0. Jump a step here. Get that isolated. So I've got 1 half over here. And here I have theta equals negative 1. Now if you didn't memorize your unit circle, <coughs> which you should, right? I'm going to grab this to help you be a little bit, your life be a little bit easier. Cosine of theta represents one half, it's our x value. So I'm looking for positive one half. Here it is here at pi over three. And I'm looking to go all the way around. So straight underneath it, five pi over three. All right, and then where does cosine of theta equal negative one half? Or I'm sorry, negative one right there at pi. So my other answer would have to be pi. 
And then did I get all the way around my values? Yep, everything fits in my interval. Check, done. Oh, okay. well, I gave you one here for you to try. I want you to give this a shot. 2 sine of 2x equals 3 cosine of regular x. So go back. This is the one with the double in it right here. So you're going to go to your identities, which I believe are in your formula sheet. And so you should be really familiar with that formula sheet. And I'm going to say, well, there's only really one option here. So that must be the one I'm going to choose. And then I'm going to try my best to simplify this out and solve for my x by putting them both in a simplifiable term that I can deal with. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about what is one of the other applications of compound angles. Um, is just determining the exact, you'll see the word exact in bold when they want you to do something like this because they're really looking for um, a specific value that can be determined from the exact values on the unit circle. The cosine of 255. Well, now comes a really great reason to have your unit circle memorized because you should know what values are on your unit circle. So 255 is going to be like in here somewhere. So when I see 255, I'm looking for two numbers that add to make 255 that are on. So 225 and 30 are going to be the values that I'm interested in. So I'm going to rewrite this as cosine of 225 plus 30 equals the cosine of 255. Now I'm going to use my compound identities because I need to love them, know them, worship them, whatever you want to say. Go to my sheet. Yours will be much clearer on yours, I hope. So the cosine, I'm going to use my formula of alpha plus beta equals the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta. And then if you notice when you look at your formula, it's plus here, and then it's the opposite, like it's plus over minus. And then when you look at the formula, it's minus over plus. That means that the plus goes with the minus on this side. Sine theta, sine beta. So now I'm just going to fill in where appropriate. I'm going to let this be my alpha and this be my beta. So I'm going to take the cosine of 225, the cosine of 30, minus the sine of 225 times the sine of 30. Now, again, look how frequently I use my unit circle. I'm going to be replacing these values that are with values that are pertinent. The cosine of 225 is negative root 2 over 2, and the sine of 225 is also negative root 2 over 2 times the sine of 30. Now I'm going to come over here to my sine quadrant right here of 30, and root 3 over 2 and 1 half. Okay, simplify, negative root 6 over 4, nothing to be done there, plus, minus minus makes plus, root 2 over 4. Now if I'd like, I can put it all over one denominator, and you can either write it as negative root 6 plus 2, all over 4. You could also put 2 minus root 6, it doesn't really matter. So what I would like you to do is do b on your own, the cosine of pi over 12. I'm not going to help you too much with this one, but I do want you to think of it like this. Pi over 12, here's why I think about these in terms of 12s, because these can all be put in a common denominator of 12, and to me that makes things a lot easier. 
So this is 2 pi over 12. This is 3 pi over 12. 4 pi over 12. 6 pi over 12. 8 pi over 12. 9 pi over 12. 10. Now if you want to, this is something that you could do all the way around this bad boy and see if that's something that helps you. So when I look at it in terms of twelfths, instead of as separate fraction denominators, I can see pretty quickly that pi over twelve is going to be something that has an increment of 15 degrees difference between them. Okay. If you wanted to, just as a thought, 2 pi over 12 is the double of 1 pi over 12. So you might be able to use that to help you. So you can solve part B. Try to do it two ways. One using a difference identity and one using a double identity. Maybe identity double wasn't going to work. Question mark? See if you can get that one to work. You might have to use a halving. Just a thought. See if you can get that to work, but this one will definitely work. So that's your practice for this section. Go ahead and do this one on your own. Simplify it out and go over it when you come to class tomorrow. One more section. Woohoo!